Hey everybody, I uh, hope you had a good holiday season and a good Christmas if you celebrate. Uh, I'm currently quarantining for COVID-19, tested positive on the 20th, uh, so I think it'd be a good time to make one of these videos, just highlight some of my favorite releases that came out in 2021. Uh, for me, 2021 was a pretty sick year of music releases. Uh, I got a big stack of records here, uh, some tapes as well, and uh, some stuff I wasn't able to get physically because of all the delays and stuff that were going on this year. But um, yeah, 2021 was a pretty good year for music releases for me. Uh, and I put Underground in the title just because I'm trying to avoid some of the bigger releases this year and just highlight a few... Uh, smaller releases some smaller labels and stuff like that too but i am touching on some of the bigger ones as well but uh like i'm not gonna have like the new carcass in here or like uh the new gojira album for one um i did really enjoy it but um yeah i'm just trying to go a little bit more lesser known and uh some stuff that i did enjoy too uh quite a bit um yeah starting off with uh, just some honorable mentions i know everyone has these uh first one is uh, this album right here, Chemist, uh, one of my favorite bands of all time, Hunted, man, when they released that original album, had me hooked, um, ever since then, they put out a lot of great stuff, or sorry, Hunted wasn't even the first album, but um, Hunted is what got me into this band, uh, and that uh, album has maintained its spot as one of my favorite albums ever, and uh, this one, yeah, did not disappoint, Deceiver was pretty freaking sweet, um, yeah, and uh, without further ado, we'll skip to the next honorable mention, which uh, is a bit more well known too. If you if you listen to heavy music, you've probably seen this release. Uh, this is Gate Creeper uh, in Unexpected Reality. Um, pretty wicked stuff. Gate Creeper, another one of my favorite bands uh, in the past few years. Um, this album was kind of like a concept album or an EP, I guess, uh, that was really fast on the front side, really slow on the B side. Uh, the slow part honestly was my favorite part of this album uh the a side i didn't care too much for i'm like I'm not into that super fast go as hard as you can kind of uh metal but that uh, b side was special to me this year for sure um <clears throat> after that another honorable mention we got here is uh significant point out of japan i think if you have watched any of my other videos which you probably didn't uh you've probably seen this one here but uh crazy japanese speed metal uh quite a ripper of an album uh really hooked me when I first heard it. Uh, these guys, yeah, like I said, out of Japan, the album's completely in uh, Japanese with some English, I think, in there. I don't know, I haven't listened to it in a bit, but uh, this was one of my favorite releases to come out of this year as well. Um, <clears throat> up next, we got uh, another honorable mention, which is actually from Canada, uh, Atre Billis, if I pronounce that correctly, and their album name is uh, Apex. Apex Apien, or I, I don't know, man. You guys chose a really hard name and a really hard album. Uh, but uh, this is off 20 bucks spin. And like I said, they're from uh, BC, I think, in uh, Canada. Some uh, fellow Canadians. Some super technical uh, death metal here. Really crazy, really fast. Lots of fun. Uh, good stuff there. Uh, and up next, we got here uh, some other Canadian uh, friends. We got Parallax Occlusion. I can try and get without glare on this camera here, but... Ray Traces of Death. This is a pretty wicked band. They're actually from Ontario, so shout out Ontario. That's where I'm from. And uh, yeah, this album is another crazy death metal album. Uh, it's kind of like an EP2, I think, if I'm not mistaken. It's just three tracks on here. But um, this is, I think they describe themselves as, as rasterized death metal. It's like kind of computer themed. Um, pretty cool stuff there. Uh, and another honorable mention here, too. Another 20 buck spin release from this year. Uh, Ghastly Mercutial Passages. Uh, pretty sweet death metal as well uh they um sure know how to fucking rip like it's just another ripper of a death metal album a lot of good death metal releases this year um i haven't listened to too much death metal recently but those are some standouts for me uh and then also the uh new malignant altar uh didn't get a chance to get this on <clears throat> a physical copy uh it's called realms of exquisite morbidity i believe the name is um, it wasn't huge on this one. Like, their their uh, initial release, their EP or whatever, was uh, more my style. I didn't like this one that as much. Didn't hook me quite as a bit, but it was pretty awesome nonetheless. Uh, another one is Hyperdontia, a Hideous Entity, another sick death metal album. Again, not much to say uh, here. If you, you gotta listen to this stuff to really get a sense of uh, of what uh, it is. Generally, I don't know how to explain that. Death metal is death metal, and this is pretty good. So I mean. Um, it's fast. It's uh, got a sick album cover. Um, yeah, lots of good stuff. My cat's going crazy in the background. If you hear him, his name's Jonesy. I'm trying to point to him. There he is. 
Uh, and then another honorable mention over here again is uh, War Flirch, uh, Psychedelic Realms of Hell. Uh, some trippy, uh, I think they're heavily uh, mushroom inspired band, uh, trippy death metal, kind of slow, kind of eerie, I guess you could say. But um, another great death metal release from this year was, uh, was that album there. Uh, and then uh, Devoid of Thought as well. They released a really killer album. They're from uh, Italy. Uh, it was a really sick death metal album, technical, kind of cosmic as well. Uh, lots of cool riffs in that album as well. And uh, just to spin here at the end a little bit, uh, this one here, Herzl, uh, if I pronounce this wrong, it's because I don't speak French. Uh, it's Le Dernier Rampart. It's like uh, epic heavy metal from France. Uh, I'm a huge heavy metal fan. Uh, you got like for fans of... Um, Manila Road, Omen, Warlord, stuff like that. Uh, it's to sung totally in French, but it's a killer album, as you can see by this cover. Uh, it really gives you a sense of what you're getting into here. Just like an epic story-driven fantasy heavy metal album. Lots of fun. Uh, and there were three thrash albums that actually kind of uh, caught my attention this year, too, a little bit. I don't listen to a lot of thrash, uh, but one of them was this one right here. Uh, Evil, their Hell Unleashed album came out this year. Uh, another honorable mention here for me. I liked it. I didn't love it, but I uh, was loved it. I liked it enough to get a copy on uh, vinyl here. I found it locally, actually, um, which surprised me. But yeah, lots of uh, fun, crazy, fast thrash riffs in that one there. Um, another one was uh, Cryptosis, um, Bionic Swarm, uh, like a cyber thrash record. Uh, lots of fun here, crazy, spacey riffs and stuff like that. Cool as fuck album cover as well. Uh, and then Paranorm as well. They also released a pretty wicked uh, album on Redefining Darkness Records. It's like a progressive thrash uh, death metal from Sweden. Um, yeah, that was, uh, those are my honorable mentions. So we're going to get jump right into uh, the number 15, which uh, is this one right here. Frozen Soul, Crypt of Ice. If you followed uh, Metal this year, you probably heard this one. Uh, a lot of people I hear call this uh, Cold Thrower, <laughs> Hevel, heavily influenced by Bolt Thrower, of course. Uh, lots of sick growls and riffs in this one here. Very chilly album. Uh, they're heavy on the Frozen theme. Uh, pretty freaking sweet. Uh, off Century Media. Uh, definitely check this out if you haven't already. Um, it's a uh, well done tribute, honestly, to Bolt Thrower. If you're into Bolt Thrower, you're going to love this album. Uh, up next is uh, one I wasn't able to get a copy of, but uh, it is another heavy metal album that I really enjoyed this year, which was um, Blazing Right, uh, Endless Halls of Golden, Golden Totem. Um, a bit of a long and a bit of a weird name there, but uh, this is some pretty sweet heavy metal. Uh, the album covers by uh, Matt Sticker, uh, Bargain Bin Blasphemy on uh, Instagram. He uh, does a lot of stick art. Follow, Give him a follow if you haven't already. I followed him for uh, about a year now, uh, ever since I... Um, Kind of found this album actually. I really like the cover art of this one, and it's filled with tons of uh, heavy metal um, bangers. Honestly, there's a lot of uh, storytelling and um, kind of a different approach. But uh, yeah, cleans. Uh, if you're into cleans, clean vocals here, and um, yeah, it's a really fun album. I really enjoyed this one a lot. Uh, <clears throat> up next is uh, another 20 bucks spin release. Uh, I was able to get it on tape right here. Some real disgusting cover art for you. And you probably can't read that late or that logo, but it's uh, cerebral rot, uh, excretion of mortality, uh, just some filthy, disgusting, gross death metal here. Uh, really sick guitars in this album. Uh, like you'll listen to that opening track and you get a sense what I mean. Uh, the title track on this album is uh, really cool. Lots of cool guitar tone and um, yeah, really fun. Honestly, uh, like I said earlier, a little bit I kind of listened to. Uh, a lot of death metal earlier in the year, and then I kind of overwhelmed myself with it, but um, this was one that stuck with me and uh, was something I really enjoyed. So Cerebral Rot, Excretion of Mortality, uh, that's number 13, pretty sweet release. Uh, number 12, we got another killer album, car, uh, album cover art, um, Demiser, Through the Gate Eternal. Um, I'm a huge fan of album cover art, honestly. I think that that's something that really dictates how... Uh, how you feel about an album. Uh, this was done by um, Lucas Ruggieri, I believe, if I pronounce that correct. It's uh, LR underscore illustration on Instagram. Uh, I've also been following him for a while. He does some really wicked stuff. I believe this was a woodblock um, print or something, but he's incredibly talented. Like, 
just look at the detail on that. It's amazing if it's focusing properly. Um, but yeah, Demiser is like a blackened thrash, blackened death metal band. Uh, heavy uh, alcohol influences, I think they have too. Um, but a lot of fun, uh, absolute ripper of an album. Uh, it's on Boris Records. Uh, this was the Silver Merge edition. It came with a little patch as well. Um, but yeah, a lot of fun on this album here. Really crazy, really fast. Uh, listen to Death Strike if you want to get a sense of what I mean by that. Um, yeah, just a ripper of an album. And some of my favorite album cover art to come out of uh, 2021. Yeah. Um, and then uh, moving forward to number 11. Uh, it's another Century Media release, which is uh, Kill Grid by the band Enforced. Uh, if you heard Enforce's release uh, At The Walls, I think was their first one, um, then you should have been expecting uh, their release this year. Uh, and this is like just an absolute ripper. Uh, crossover thrash. Um, tons of fun. If you're into Power Trip or you ever listen to Power Trip, I definitely, definitely recommend this album. Um, crazy, crazy, just fast riffing. And I really like the vocalist in this band too. Um, <clears throat> UXO one of the sickest tracks this year honestly for me um really fun stuff uh another cool album cover here um but yeah enforced kill grid if you ever even dabbled in crossover thrash give this album a listen ton of fun and uh number 10 we are going back a bit to uh heavy metal or speed metal again this is vulture dealing death off of uh metal blade uh this is the dying victims productions uh, tape and um, yeah, this album kind of surprised me again. I honestly I saw the cover art. It was like, oh, look pretty cool. <laughs> again, I'm a sucker for cover art. Uh, this album is like um, German speed metal. Um, yeah, this is again. Uh, it's hard to say um, specifics, but um, this album's a ton of fun. If you ever listen to speed metal, uh, Malicious Souls, banger of a track. Um, Below the Mausoleum was one of my favorite songs this year as well. Always gets stuck in your head. Crazy fast riffs. Uh, some nice big shrieks in here too if you're into that kind of thing. Really fast technical guitars and just something that uh, really doesn't stop. It's 110 the whole time. Um, lots of like chanting choruses that get stuck in your head. And uh, yeah, fun, fun album right there as well. Uh, up next, so number nine, that was number 10. Number nine is uh, this album right here, Mortiferum or Mortiferum or uh, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, Preserved in Torment on Profound Lore Records. Uh, this won't be the only Profound Lore Records release. Uh, there's actually another one up next, I think. But uh, Profound Lore, uh, based in Ontario too, I believe uh, they ship out of Ontario at least. This got here really, really quick. Uh, Mortiferum, it's been on my radar since their uh, debut. Um, these guys are just death doom powerhouses, real chunky, real heavy, uh, real atmospheric. Uh, if you're into any sort of death metal or doom metal, I honestly, I got to recommend this and their debut as well. Uh, just super heavy, super atmospheric. Um, a lot of just crushing riffs and really, uh, thick atmosphere, honestly, like just killer stuff. The back there gives you a sense of, uh, what you're into uh what you're in for for this record but um yeah death doom one of my favorite genres honestly um yeah i, mean, I love this album and this band is, is great um i mean <laughs> again i feel like i'm repeating myself here with some things uh a lot of my descriptors or adjectives i guess you could say are pretty similar but uh it's just the way uh i describe an album uh if it's fun uh, it's something i say a lot but um that's what really stands out for me uh and this one i guess i wouldn't really describe as fun but it's fucking sick <laughs> another profound lore uh release here spectral wound uh, a diabolic thirst um kind of find some humor in this cover here but uh it's pretty sick um black metal so it's my probably my one like actual black metal release of this year that i uh have on this list i'm not huge into black metal but this album really kind of blew my face off um there's one track on here uh frigid and spellbound if you're gonna listen to a song listen to that song Man, that's a sick song. Um, the riffs on that song are insane. The the vocals in this band are just so sick. Like, um, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not super into black metal, but this release, honestly, stayed in my constant rotation all year. Um, definitely some good stuff. I got to go back still and listen to the rest of uh, the releases that Spectral Wound has put out. I know they've been around for a few years now, and uh, I do got to jump into their older catalog. But, uh, yeah, Diabolic Thirst. 
uh, if you can get your hands on a copy of this, I got mine off the Profound Lore site, but I uh, definitely recommend that album. Lots of uh, fast as hell riffing and uh, some riffs that stick in your head. Like I said, that fr Frigid and Spellbound riff was in my head for like a month. Um, just crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, and then moving on to number seven, I wasn't able to get a copy of this because it came out recently, uh, but uh, it's Morgul Blade uh, Fell Sorcery Abounds. This is a Pennsylvania, uh, they're out of Pennsylvania. They're a heavy metal death, uh, death metal fusion with uh, a ton of fantasy themes, as you can kind of get by this cover. Um, but man, this is a sick album. Um, yeah, it just came out kind of recently, so I haven't had a chance to uh, really dive deep into it. But after my first couple of listens, I was really hooked on this. Um, I'm a huge heavy metal head, and um, the death metal and like fantasy themes are something I really enjoy in an album. Uh, and this album is full of those. I love an album that tells a good story and uh, uses a lot of fantasy elements like um, you know, medieval fighting and swords and dragons and all that shit. Uh, I love that stuff. So this album was definitely up there. Uh, this is number seven, Morgul Blade, Fell Sorcery Mounds. And i um, really looking forward to grabbing a copy of this as soon as I can, but I'm pretty sure it ships out of Europe and I'm trying to wait until after Christmas with all the shipping and everything like that. But that's a sick album. Uh, definitely recommend that if you're into any sort of heavy metal or death metal even. Jump on that. Uh, and then up next we got uh, number six uh, is this album right here. Hooded Menace, The Tritonous Bell. Sorry for my focus on my camera. It kind of sucks. But uh, this is, yeah, Hooded Menace. They don't need much of an introduction. Uh, absolute death, doom, powerhouses right here. These guys, excuse me, have been on my uh, radar for a few years now. This release fucking blew my face off as well when it first came out. I'm sure, if you uh, were following music this year, you probably heard this one. It's one of the more popular releases in this list. But, uh, man, this was a sick album. Uh, their, like, use of the female vocals near the end there, too, was uh, something that kind of caught me off guard and I actually really enjoyed. Um, yeah, this is a wicked album. If you're into Doom or into Death Doom and you haven't heard this somehow, do give this a listen. Um, super sick. Uh, it's got cover art by um, Dan Seagrave, I think, is the one who did this. You probably heard that name before, too, if you're in uh, this um, in the metal community. Dan Seagrave. Uh, does a great art as well. Um, yeah, Hooded Menace, the Tritonous Bell for number six. And getting into the top five, number five right here. Uh, here we go with Steel Bearing Hand. My camera needs to focus. Slay in Hell, absolute ripper of like a death thrash album. As you can see by this cover, gives you a, a sense of what to expect. Just absolute relentless insane riffing lots of atmosphere um just so much i don't know depth in this album i guess you can say it goes all over the place it slows down it speeds up the vocalist is unreal uh the guitarist for frozen soul i think is a guitarist um it plays in this band as well um just amazing relentless stuff it's hard to describe as well like the actual genre this is i've heard death thrash i've heard thrash i've heard death metal i've heard death doom in some places like it's just all over the place and it's a really wicked record uh that cover art alone caught my eye when i first saw it i know i'll say it again i'm a huge fan of cover art um this cover art especially was like holy shit i gotta listen to this what what's inside of this album i need to know <laughs> but um yeah insanguined is one of the the last songs on here it's like kind of crazy one of my favorite tracks off this album uh all over the place again as well give it a listen i promise it'll blow you away um yeah that's number five number four right here heavy sentence bang to rights came out earlier uh, in the year you might have forgot about it uh, how could you forget about it this album is so good uh it's a heavy metal uh, kind of in the vein of like Motorhead even, I guess you could say, but like just heavy metal, growly, manly vocals, and holy shit, this album is so much fun. Um, please give it a listen if you haven't already, man. This thing is so sick. Um, right off the bat, man. Medusa, <clears throat> what a sick track. What a great song to uh, open this record with. And they literally don't let up at all, man. Like, Edge of the Knife is a banger. The title track is insane. Possession is insane. Like, this album is great, and it's so much fun, and uh, I can't recommend it enough, even if you're not really into heavy metal. Just a ton of fun. It's not super heavy. It's not super scary. It's just a great album, an album that always brings me joy to listen to it. Definitely got to listen to that if you haven't. 
That's Heavy Sentence, Bang to Rights. That was the Dying Victims production tape. Uh, they're from the UK. Uh, heavy metal, traditional metal, uh, whatever you want to call it. Awesome stuff. And getting into the top three. Uh, my top three, I wasn't able to get a copy of this. Um, because, again, it came out really recently. But there it is. Stormkeep, Tales of Other Time. You've probably seen this. You've probably heard of it if you're keeping up with uh, new releases. So much acclaim for this album, and rightly so. Uh, kind of came out of nowhere for me, at least. Uh, I had listened to Stormkeep's Galdrum uh, demo uh, a few times. Never really caught my attention too much back in the day, or when it first came out. I think it was like 2017 or 2018, I forget. Um, but when this dropped, that album cover again caught my eye. Uh, Stormkeep sounded familiar, so I gave it a listen. That first listen, I was like... This is it. This is like one of the greatest albums to come out in the past few years for me. Uh, again, I don't really listen to black metal. This is kind of like black metal, melodic black metal. Uh, but holy shit, this album is insane. Uh, front to back, fantasy themes litter this thing. Again, something I really love. Uh, it's like a wizard, wanderer is one of the first words you hear out of this album, which is unreal. Like looking at that cover, how can you not love that? The color palette's super sick. The sounds in this thing are amazing. Uh, if you haven't heard this album, please give it a listen front to back. It's an epic tale of dragons and wizards and warriors and the best kind of stuff you want in a heavy metal album. Uh, just front to back, amazing. A little bit of Dungeon Synth mixed in there too, like their last release. Um, I think it's near the middle or near the end of this one. Uh, but tons of fun. Great album. I'm not a black metal fan necessarily, but I love this album. Uh you hear a lot of people say that. I think it's gone around a lot this year. Uh, but this album absolutely rips. Stormkeep, Tales of Other Time. And uh, the last two, both from uh, 20 Bucks Spin, number two, number one. I can kind of intermingle these. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a huge Death Doom fan. I like that big, heavy, atmospheric, kind of lingry flowiness of Death Doom. Um, and these two are a little bit different from each other, but... Uh, in a similar vein right here, both off of 20 bucks spin. If you've been following 20 bucks spin or the uh, kind of underground uh, metal releases this year, you probably recognize both of these, even though my camera won't focus on them exactly. Uh, we got right here. This is Worm Forever Glade, uh, self-described Floridian Funeral Doom. Uh, some Unreal cover art by Brad Moore. I think his handle is like art underscore wizard 76 on Instagram. This is an incredible album. Uh, Worm, again, was not really on my radar until this dropped. Um, gave it a listen. It was kind of blown away at first listen again. Tons of atmosphere. Uh, sweeps, riffing, like sweeps across. Like you wouldn't expect to find that in a Death Doom album necessarily. But it somehow fits really well in this. Uh, like sweep picking. Uh, tons of like reverb and all kinds of uh, unreal atmosphere in this. And uh, I think Floridian Funeral Swamp Doom or whatever he calls it accurately describes this record. Um, lots of fun. Uh, or not really fun. It's kind of dreary. But like to me, I love this stuff. It's like uh, really atmospheric and uh, echoey, I guess you could say. And it does kind of feel like you're walking through swamp at night. Um, definitely, definitely one of my favorite releases this year. As you can see why it's ranked at number one and two. I'm really kind of toss up between these two here but this other one you may or may not have heard of this release uh it's called the tide turns eternal by the band dream unending uh this album here's jonesy to say how great this album is uh this album is uh, a self-described dream doom i think is what they call it um it actually features derek vela of uh two mold uh which is the another one of my favorite bands um Jonesy, are you serious, man? As I was saying, uh, it features Derek Vela of Two Mold, which I'm a huge fan of. Two Mold, uh, one of my favorite bands, got their shirt on. Also have their uh, poster that was included in um, Planetary Clairvoyance uh, frame behind me there. Um, but yeah, this album is unreal. It's uh, Dream Doom, it's called, is what they call it. Uh, it also features uh, Justin Detour, if I'm pronouncing that right, from uh, Innumerable Forms. If you ever heard of that band as well, Unreal Death Doom there. Um, really great stuff in this record. Lots and lots of atmosphere, lots and lots of like reverb and trippy, dreamy riffs. Um, like, man, this album is amazing. It's like kind of a breath of fresh air, honestly, from the rest of the list. A lot of the stuff kind of gets repetitive over time, especially death metal, I find, gets uh, pretty 
pretty repetitive sometimes. You're always just listening to the kind of same same style, uh, and this was kind of refreshing to have uh, come out this year. Definitely a standout as it's my number one or number two pick. Um, Dream Unending, I'm really looking forward to what these guys release in the future because this album was amazing. What a great debut. Um, not much else I can say about this really besides it, I really loved it. It's on repeat all the time in my headphones. Um, again, being a huge Death Doom fan, this album really blew me away. Uh, Dream Doom, <laughs> I guess I like that stuff too. But uh, yeah, that's my list. Uh, if you're still here... Thanks so much for sticking it out. Um, you know, uh, it's fun making these lists, and I finally got a chance to do one. Uh, so thanks for watching if you did make it this far. Uh, and uh, tell me what you think about my lists in the comments. If you want to roast me, go ahead. Uh, I don't really care. But uh, thanks so much again, and uh, have a good uh, 2022. We'll see what's on the, on the plate for then. Take care.